Hi, my name is Ankit. I'm from Technical University Berlin. And in this video, I will be presenting you my paper titled Governor Operator Placement for a Unified Fog Cloud Environment. Following is the agenda, I will briefly talk first, I briefly talk about overall motivation of this paper and some of the key contribution. And then to provide you with the detailed explanation, I will start by presenting an example IoT infrastructure and some of the related use cases. And using this information, I will uh, explain how exactly governor function overall. Um, once I'm done with that, I will show you the live demonstration and then uh, some of the future work that we wanted to carry. A unified fog cloud environment is, uh, uh, presents a novel opportunities for uh, processing the IoT data. And the reason is very simple. We have some of the devices uh, residing on the fog layer that can be utilized for earlier computation of the IoT data that is coming. And then anything that can't be computed on this fog layer can be offloaded to our cloud uh, data center, which has much more capacity in terms. Uh, now, it is in this context, the question is, how can we perform operator placement on Fog or the cloud node, uh, all this while satisfying different SLA objectives uh, that these workloads might have. We present Governor, it's an operator placement approach for such a unified for cloud environment. And to uh, uh, demonstrate how exactly Governor function, we present some example Governor policies for handling different SLA objectives for these IoT workloads. Using the demonstration tool, you can also visualize uh, operator placement uh, when you select one of these example governor policies. Okay, so here is an example IoT infrastructure for a ride sharing service. Um, um, here in the bottommost layer, we have different vehicles that are connected to the fog devices that are spread across uh, in the city. Uh, and uh, these devices are then connected to the cloud uh, data center via our gateway. User access different kind of services uh, that uh, is provided by this company via cloud. And all of these different kind of services uh, that uh, pro is provided to the user have different kind of SLA objective. To uh, explain it further, I present here five different example use cases. So for example, if I want to track the vehicle movement in real time, my SLA objective for that particular use case would be to have faster response. This means the data is, in, uh, is getting generated at the um, uh, vehicle. It should be quickly rendered onto the mobile application uh, of the user. Similarly, once the trip has ended, the building information should not be lost anywhere. Uh, it should and should be delivered to the billing service. Uh, and here the objective is not the fast response, but uh, to make a del a delivery guaranteed. This means uh, in case of some uh, kind of node failure happen, the data should still be transmitted to the uh, uh, service which requires this. Uh, and in the end, we have uh, another example, for example, a health checks for IoT infrastructure. You may not want it to use all the resources that are available for your performing the health checks, but rather just wanted to uh, use bare minimum resources. Here, you do not care about uh, performance of the system, neither about the fail safety, but uh, having this workflow run with minimum amount of resources. Okay, so uh, now I have presented you my example infrastructure and some of the example use cases. So I will move you uh, move to explain uh, governor placement process. Uh, the user submits its user query and uh, it is converted into logical query plan. That's shown in figure A. Uh, and then figure B shows the overall network architecture. So uh, all the nodes that are there, how they are connected and so on and so forth. Uh, all of this is uh, uh, defined as an interconnected graph. Uh, then once we have these two information, we move to the governor, which contains consists of two different phases. So first phase is selection of path. So we select between, sorry, uh, a source node and a destination node, how exactly it has to be transmitted. And uh, once that is done, we uh, perform uh, operator assignment. Uh, we move to operator assignment phase and we assign these operator, uh, which is a part of logical query plan. Uh, to the path, uh, to the node which resides on the path that has been selected in the previous phase. Now, there can be different ways that you can select the path between a uh, source and a destination node. For example, here, instead of going to C1 via F3 and F5, I can go uh, via F3, F7, and then to the C1. Similarly, operator assignment can uh, be done differently, right? So 
instead of assigning op3 on node f5 i can assign op3 on c1 itself so it's in this context uh, uh, i wanted to uh, say that uh, path selection and operator assignment can influence uh, how the workload has been placed and therefore can influence also what is the overall performance uh, and therefore i present you governor policy so governor policy is basically guide uh, go, uh, the placement process how exactly the path selection has to be done and how does the operator assignment for example if you wanted to perform for tolerance you may want to select all the paths between a uh, source and the sink and then when it comes to operator assignment you wanted to use the node which is shared among most of those paths so that if uh, an a path failed then you can still reach that particular node via some other path uh, and of course you may want to do replicate the operators whenever possible uh, here are the five example policies that i present all of them are based on the use case that i have presented now let's move quickly to the demonstration and for that i will quickly jump to my virtual machine Yeah, so this is the uh, web interface. And here you can see that uh, user can supply his input query. Uh, the uh, the API used here is for specific for built for Nebula stream. And you can ask me later on and during the question answer session, how exactly, uh, what does this mean? Uh, just to give you a quick uh, 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 run up for this particular interface, uh, you here he defines that you want to read the data from uh, something called uh, temperature. So these are the logical stream name. Uh, temperature can be multiple physical sensors. Uh, temperature sensors are located uh, at different locations. And then I have put an example uh, provided three different filters here. Uh, and once the data has been filtered out, I wanted to print the result uh, on a print, uh, print line or on somewhere in the console. This is a button which when you click will show you the overall topology. The topology uh, consists of uh, cloud node and intermediate fog node and the sensor nodes. And uh, here you can see the, uh, the physical, uh, physically the logical temperature and uh, logical uh, temperature sensor is uh, being divided into physical temperature sensors here, uh, it's temperature one and temperature two. And uh, they also show uh, how much free compute and how much of the uh, how much total compute and how much of that is free uh, for performing the operator placement moving next uh, if you click on show query plan he will uh, pro provide you with a qu uh, query graph here uh, similar to uh, the one that i've shown you before in the uh, presentation this basically shows uh, what is the source operator uh, the, the three operators uh, filter operators that are there and in the end sync and all of them are logical now once we have the uh, infrastructure uh, graph and the logical query plan uh, what we can do is perform operator assignment so let's say i wanted to perform uh, operator assignment for uh, low latencies so once i click on that a graph will be generated which will show you uh, how exactly the operator placement happened. Uh, and here you can see that the path has been selected such that uh, the uh, overall link latency is the bare minimum. Uh, if there is another path existing which has a similar kind of latency, he selects the one which has the minimum number of nodes. Um, and for performing the operator assignment, you can see that he has placed the source operator here and two filters and once he performed these three operators here he has exhausted completely all the free compute and therefore the next operator is placed on the next node uh, and here you can see that similar to this op1 op1 is uh, based on the uh, next temperature uh, uh, temperature sensor as well uh, and here you can see that we are performing operator replication in the end the sync is always placed on the cloud Okay, so uh, uh, the, with this, uh, the one last thing, uh, once you select the uh, uh, particular policy that you wanted to you choose, so high throughput, for example, uh, the uh, new graph will be computed and updated. And uh, here in this label, you can see how much time it took for him to perform the uh, overall uh, placement. I will quickly now move back to my presentation. So 
these are the future some of the future works that we wanted to do uh, i wanted to work next on uh, query optimization part so so that uh, query rewrites operator uh, changing the uh, location of operators uh, moving them uh, shuffling them or merging them uh, or uh, uh, performing operator fusion or fusion and utilizing some of the information from the topology uh, to perform uh, these query of plan optimizations and uh, I also wanted to support placing multiple different queries with multiple different uh, SLA objectives onto this graph. Right now, we can only place one single query. And I wanted to handle dynamicity in uh, this infrastructure. So what if the nodes are moving and so on and so forth. One last thing that I want to mention is uh, about Nebula Stream. So you can visit us on www.nebula.streams. This is a next generation IoT data management platform that we guys are working on. We can find more information if you scan this uh, uh, QR code here, uh, or if you visit our website, then you can see other uh, interesting work that uh, we guys are working on. With this, uh, I thank you for your time, and I'm looking forward to your question. Thanks.